Good day friends and welcome to this four week video series where we delve into the Doxa Day of Year theme Hope, specifically how it connects with Jesus and the Kingdom of Heaven. My name is Gerard, I'm part of the Doxa Day Garden Root team and I'm looking forward to spending time with you these following weeks. And we started this year theme Sunday with a sermon from Ephesians 1 where Paul prays a prayer for revelation, hope is something that God wants to reveal in us, a revelation by His Spirit so that we can know the hope of His calling. This is a prayer that we can pray for ourselves and every other partner in the Doxadeo family. But remember, when God works, we are not spectators. Even in His work bringing revelation in us, we are partners. We position ourselves to receive this revelation by beholding King Jesus and the Kingdom of Heaven and this will be the purpose of these conversations. Beholding the King by reading scriptures with other believers and engaging in prayer. That's why I want to encourage you to actively participate in the conversations. We will even pause the video at certain points to help us with conversations and discussions. And remember, it is when you learn to put things into your own words that new ways of thinking gets integrated into your life. Our discussions will focus on Jesus and the Kingdom of Heaven. And initially this can feel strange to talk about the Kingdom of Heaven. We trust that this presentation and the questions that we ask will help you to talk about the Kingdom of Heaven, to phrase things, to put things into your own words so that our perspective of God's Kingdom and the hope it brings can grow. Our conversations will grow from the Gospel accounts according to Matthew and this week we will focus on Matthew 4 uh, where Matthew tells us how Jesus announces the news of the arrival of the Kingdom. But before we delve into that, let's share some news. Let's share of a time when, where you received any news, preferably good news, about your home or your work or your community. You can turn to somebody else, we're going to pause the video and then share any news, what was the news and what impact did that news have on you. Matthew 4, verse 17 through 23. From that time on, Jesus began to make his proclamation. Repent, he would say, the kingdom of heaven is arriving. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were fishermen and were casting nets into the sea. Follow me, said Jesus. I'll make you fish for people. Straight away, they abandoned their nets and followed him. He went on further and saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. They were in the boat mending their nets with Zebedee their father. He called them and at once they left the boat and their father and followed him. He went on through the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and every illness among the people. So, Jesus moved to a town, Capernaum, by the sea. That's very important. No, I'm only joking. And he started his public career there with a proclamation, a big announcement. The kingdom of heaven is arriving. According to Jesus, there is a happening, a good news happening. That's how Matthew 4 writes it later. Good news, the kingdom of heaven is arriving. Just saying quickly, uh, saying heaven instead of the word God was a regular Jewish way to avoid the word God out of reverence and respect. So if Matthew writes kingdom of heaven, he means the same as kingdom of God in the other gospels. Jesus announces the kingdom of heaven is arriving then and there where he is starting with his public work. And this is good news. 
picture this. You're watching a news bulletin or maybe listening one and the announcer says breaking news and then he goes on and announces the breaking news. Jesus is doing something like this. He is saying breaking news and it is good. The kingdom of heaven is arriving. A personal story I still vividly remember when I received the news that my wife is pregnant. She, she phoned while I was busy at the sea making ready for a surf and uh, when I picked up the phone I heard this news. I immediately knew my life will, our lives will never be the same again. News and the effect it has on us. So before we talk about the kingdom of heaven, let's consider what news is and what it does. News comes from the word new. There's a happening that creates a new reality and a new future. That's what happenings do. They create new realities and new futures. And we hear of this happening through news. The bigger the happening, the more people are affected by it and the greater impact it has on the future, the bigger the news become. And when it is a positive impact on people and a positive future that is created, it is good news. The proclamation Jesus makes is that kingdom of heaven that is arriving is good news. It's a happening that creates a new reality and a new future. Without the happening, there's no news. Without the news, we don't know what's happening. A last thing about news, consider this. The reality before the news breaks determines how the news is received. Say for instance, and thankfully that wasn't the case, but say for instance me and my wife were struggling to have children. The, the news that she was pregnant would have had even a greater impact on us. So that the backstory, the story before the news determines how the news is received. So back to the good news about the kingdom of God that is arriving and this announcement of Jesus. Let's pause the video and share some thoughts, questions, maybe even an emotion. If you think of the words, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, what comes to mind? Let's pause the video, turn to one other person and share what comes to mind. So the important question would be, what did Jesus have in mind when he announced the good news of the arrival of the kingdom of God? God, as promised uh, through the prophets in the Old Testament, declared his intention to fill this world with his kingdom by sending a king. And this king would bring justice, healing, renewal for nations and even for the whole of creation. There's a lot of passages in the Old Testament that refers to this king and the kingdom that would come. Isaiah 9 and 11, Daniel 2 and 7, Psalm 2 and 72, among many others. And these promises form a significant part of the backstory of the news that Jesus announced when he announced the arrival of God's kingdom. When Jesus announced this good news, he claimed that God is making good on his promises. The kingdom of, his, of heaven is arriving because the king is here. He has come. And friends, in next week's conversation we'll explore more about the hope that this kingdom brings, the kingdom of heaven. But for now, let's share with each other what, what would come to mind if you received, for instance, a phone call saying the kingdom of God is arriving at your home or at your place of work or in your community. Can we pause the video and share some thoughts, feelings, questions? What would come to mind if you received the good news that the kingdom of heaven is arriving in the places where you live and work?
Okay, so for this part of the conversation, I also have a partner. So again, it's lucky to be with you. Thank you, Gerard. I'm really excited that we get to spend some time together and we get to spend some time with you in your homes or at church. And I'm really trusting that God would help me position myself to receive a revelation from Him about this good news and the kingdom of heaven. But oftentimes the kingdom of heaven feels so far-fetched from our lives. It feels like it's something that's far removed from our daily lives, so to speak. Yeah, and I think that's why we cannot emphasize enough that we start with the kingdom as good news. It's a happening. Jesus says that the kingdom is arriving. And not to jump the gun, but at the end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus makes this proclamation all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth and all in all languages means all so every home every workplace every community is included in this good news the kingdom is arriving and I I think that when we believe this good news the kingdom will become more relevant to my everyday life so we start with faith yes and, and what i what i what i hear you saying is that jesus is king of everything not just some things but of everything and i think that's a, such a important thing for us to understand that jesus has all authority yeah. in heaven and on earth and in all our homes all our workplaces and all our communities that we get to be part of and as the saying goes either Jesus is Lord of all or not Lord at all and we've been put in this privileged position so to speak that we get to have this faith that Jesus speaks about this kingdom and this good news and that it can become more relevant in our lives today yeah that grace I think earths the kingdom to our lives yeah we can believe it's true of every home but we can believe. It's true of every workplace, but we can believe. I think another thing that helps us to earth this reality in our lives is to see that immediately after Jesus announces the arrival of the kingdom, He calls people by name. Uh, in other words, He makes people partners of this mission, of His mission to establish God's kingdom in this world. And I think when we also hear that call the moment we believe the good news we are also called yes. to partner with Jesus in this coming of the kingdom when we believe and receive that calling I think the kingdom will also become more relevant every day in our lives I love the truth that you shared now that God calls us to partner with him it's a yeah. calling that we have on our lives and yeah. In terms of the season that we're in, in 2024, the word that we've been using for a while has been behold, beholding this King Jesus. And when we behold King Jesus, there's two things that we see. We see what God's doing. And secondly, we get to see our purpose and our calling in this. And as the saying goes, what we behold is what we become. And if we behold Jesus, we become more like him. Mm. And this partnership is actually not just in the Gospels, it's right through the New Testament. Paul, in all of his letter, ref letters, refers to this. Uh, one example is uh, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the word in Greek uh, translated here as fellowship also means partnership. Actually, that's the first meaning of the word partnership we've been called by God who is faithful it's not our faithfulness that makes him call us it's yeah. his faithfulness we've been called by him into this partnership with Jesus to to establish the kingdom and to bring hope um, it's not the fellowship of the ring it's the fellowship of the king the king I love that I absolutely love that the fellowship of the king and we get to be part of this we get to be part of this mission and when Jesus announces the kingdom of heaven he calls people to repent and unfortunately the word repentance oftentimes has this weighty baggage attached to the word where people feel like they need to feel sorry for themselves or feel sad when they hear the word repentance but yeah. If we have to see repentance in a different light, in the light of this kingdom, God actually calls us to repent because He calls us to be partners with Him. And He calls us on this mission to be hope carriers and to see the light 
that God's called us to. Yeah, and actually that's more, uh, more in line with the original meaning of the word repentance. Repentance in the Greek means something like turning around, especially a radical turn in the way we think. So, so repentance with the message of the arrival of the kingdom is actually the king summoning. Uh, summons, he summons, uh, what's the right English? He summons, he summons us. us, us. <laughs> yeah. He summons us um, by calling us to repentance, yeah. to align our thinking with him and with his kingdom. So this mindset of seeing Jesus, hearing the good news, the kingdom is arriving, and aligning my way of thinking, I think that will really help us to live with the kingdom as a relevant reality every day, at home, at work, and in our community. Absolutely love that. And I think the, the kingdom is so relevant in our lives. And as we end the video, we have some questions that we've, we thought that you could spend some time in your small groups and pause and consider and spend some time around discussion. So what do you think could change if people really believe that the kingdom of heaven is arriving at home, at work, in their community, if they really believe and align their mindset with this good news, what do you think could change? Absolutely love that question. And um, another question we thought we would ask is, what would it look like in your life if you have to behold, study, ponder, gaze upon Jesus, this King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and look at the and ponder on the kingdom of heaven in order to realign our thinking. What yeah. would that look like for us? And in other words, what would it look like in your life to live a life with this good news that we have? Mm. A last question you can consider. What comes to mind when you hear that Jesus has called you to partner for this mission, establishing the kingdom of heaven as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. May God bless you as you continue this conversation and let's pray together. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your love and your grace. And Jesus, I pray the way you taught us to pray that your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And thank you, Jesus, that you came to fulfill God's promises. And thank you for this hope that your kingdom brings to us here on earth. And we believe in you, Jesus, as Lord of all. And we believe that you've called us to partner with you. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.